with the book that came out, well, it didn't come out, but it's available for pre-order right now, also on dndbeyond.com. <laughs> uh, at what what do you think are some advice that you have for dungeon masters who want to run mysteries? Like, why would they want to try to buy this particular book? I mean, it, it certainly is really a lot more accessible. Seventeen short form adventures, like that's what I grew up with in second and third edition. You just went to the comic book shop. There were a couple of skinny little modules you can buy, and then you had an adventure for maybe a month. Um, but they're all considered to be mysteries. That's that a lot of mysteries. Me. That interests me, yeah. And it, it strikes me as maybe one of the reasons why it's one-shots and not a campaign. I imagine a string of mystery adventures played campaign cell might become a bit exhausting after a time. And truly, all of the best mysteries, with a couple of exceptions, are are short and bite-sized and easily contained. You know, the original Sherlock Holmes mysteries were published serially in the Strand magazine. And only like, what? Only Hound of the Baskervilles is a full-length novel. And, yeah, you know, the uh, same I, can, I believe that that's correct, yeah. Yeah, the same can be said for like Agatha Christie stuff and, and all of that, all very nice and self-contained. Um, and it works perfectly for D&D in that setting too, because the fewer moving parts you have, the, the lower your odds of everything falling apart and going off the rails. Um, because mysteries require clues and deduction and investigation, all of which are things that can easily be sidetracked by player characters. Um, uh, unless you are truly a masterful adventure clockmaker, it can be hard to make an adventure like this because, you know, maybe you expect the characters to talk to, char- to you know, the, the Duke who only knows a little bit. But if they somehow intuit that it is the sous chef who knows everything, and they talk to him, suddenly the pacing of your mystery has all gone off. You you wanted to put kind of breadcrumb clue by clue along your path, but if they somehow either through luck or a stroke of intuitive genius short circuit uh, that breadcrumb trail, suddenly all of the rising tension and excitement of piecing together a mystery just turns into kind of this boring exposition dump where you find the person who knows everything. Um, I think I think the fun thing is knowing that the players will eventually do a thing and they mm. have opportunity to figure something out. And watching that as a dungeon master can be quite fun. Mm. I was particularly nasty once and uh, one of the players was interrogated, woke up and spent, I would say, five episodes thinking everything was fine, except for they started not having any spell slots. As mm. they use spells, they started not getting good rests. And then they, someone eventually, because uh, the fake aura, which you can cast, I forget the name of the who, Nice Nistel's. Jules Magic Aura. Uh, yeah. yeah exactly. Hey, we got it, Justice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that runs out after 24 hours. So yeah. I think what's good with one of these aha moments and mysteries is that it, you played fair. Um, uh, that's very important. So after 24 hours, when they first casted uh, Detect Magic on that character, nothing really popped up. Up, but then you know five days later they cast it and they're like oh my god you're a similar crumb and the person was fake this whole time oh uh, wow that's one of my favorite ones ever to to, to pull dope. off <laughs> and, and the horror on the player character's face now of course the player had a an opportunity to save themselves even though they were actually dead um because you don't want to take away agency but uh that's one of those examples where you know someone's going to cast detect magic eventually and that's a full radius spell right so they're gonna look around the room and then something pops up it's like hold up (laughs) (laughs) like maybe this mundane item is actually magical you know that kind of stuff um playing into Mm -hmm. what players constantly do is kind of fun you raised a really good point todd and i'll pass it over to justice for you in a second just want to comment on this real quick it's that playing fair is so important in these mystery adventures because there's there's a trust between you and the players that they will be able to solve it on their own ingenuity or at least their players ingenuity if you let them make intelligence checks or stuff to actually figure out things that uh they might not be quick-witted enough to get right you know we, we let 
weak people play barbarians because they have a strength score. We can let dumb people play wizards because they have an intelligence score, right? Wow. That's not there's there's no judgment here. <laughs> I feel like there was a little bit of judgment. <laughs> Everyone's real life and fictional people have their own strengths and weaknesses, and that's that's beautiful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, um, fair play, uh, and it has entirely to do with. If you've ever watched a really, really good mystery or read a really, really good mystery, uh, the big moment at the end where everything falls into place is the actual climax of the book. Not, not mm. the climax where the, you know, they rip the mask off and it's mm. old man Jenkins. It's the moment for you when all the clues fall into place into your head and you're like, oh my God, that's who it is. And then you just get to kind of have that moment where you watch the, the sleuth figure it out also. This is doubly true in mystery adventures because you're not just a, a reader. You are in the adventure yourself. The, the entire joy of it is taking clues A through Z and being like, oh, that's it. And the opposite is true too. Whenever you read a bad mystery, you'll see that, oh, none of these clues meant anything, right? Uh, <laughs> um, I'm... I'm gonna state my mind here on the BBC Sherlock a bit. I don't like the BBC Sherlock show very much because that Sherlock is too smart. He's so smart that mm. the clues never give the audience a chance to solve the mystery themselves. He's just a god who can intuit things no one else can. He goes to his mind palace. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and, and, and I would argue like, th it's not that he's too smart. He presents the, they present the facts in opposite order. Mm. he miraculously says like well, i did this thing and, and certainly this is a, a you know a fault in somewhat some degree in the books as well but not mm. to this the extent as the show but he'll be like i noticed this 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 and this that's why i know this is true mm -hmm. and i'm like you just didn't give anyone a chance to yeah figure and that can make for out. a fun thriller but it's not a good mystery Right. No, no, that absolutely. show can be fun, but it's not a mystery show. No, it's Sherlock Holmes porn. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like if you so... read all the books, right? <laughs> you know, uh, it's like we. I'll, I'll watch a Sherlock Holmes, and I was raised on Sherlock Holmes mm. and the radio dramas and all that stuff. Um, and I was very thankful as a kid that I figured out most of them. Uh, uh, but yeah, the, 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 certainly that show has some faults, but there's nothing more satisfying when you did have all the facts yeah. and nothing more mm. cheating and annoying and frustrating when you did not have the facts. Like mm -hmm. if, if you felt like someone's just shifting um, the knowledge and the clues that are there uh, just to seem mysterious, you know, you know, mysterious, that's not fun. And mm -hmm. you should be also willing to, if they figure it out early, let it go. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. let them figure it out i i i i didn't make the best adventure i would say where like a green dragon was attacking a city and uh, they're like oh it must have they must have the dragon's eggs <laughs> because then, why would a green dragon be attacking a city it was like that quick <laughs> so yeah you, you really have to pay it off for people and mm -hmm. and let them win also. It was just so funny because last night I was playing, uh, Sam and I had our date night. And so we decided to play those boxed Sherlock games by, I think Fantasy Flight does them. Mm -hmm. And I realized while I was doing this game, I was like, wow, I am not Sherlock. I want to feel like Sherlock. Mm -hmm. But when I have to be Sherlock, this is kind of hard. I was like, I'm not very smart. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this one isn't even in the on, it's it's on the map but it's not even in the directory this person doesn't exist i found a clue so bad <laughs> the the makers <laughs> of this game didn't even put it in the game because they're like nobody's gonna go look at this doctor's shop um but i i think i think you know when when running uh mystery and i think mysteries are great for one, one reason as someone with two health degrees at this point mysteries are a great opportunity for medicine checks yes. that never happen at yes. the table mm. i don't I, have to i totally agree that that is a great point medicine does not get used enough in DD. nobody ever uses it and and when you have a, a like a murder mystery it's a great opportunity to do like an incremental check uh one of the first things i ever put on the guild it had a you look at the body at the very beginning of the adventure and if you get a 10 you learn this and everything below if you get a 12 you get a little bit mm. more and if you get that nat 20 you like can smell iodine on the body or something and you're like oh iodine yeah that's great um i think that 
kind of on that same vein, when you're running mysteries, you got to remember that mystery is like a big puzzle. And I don't know about y'all's tables, but I've watched mine struggle over puzzles and I struggle at puzzles because when you tend to describe them, they, you can see it in your mind as a DM, but your players don't know what you know. So something that seems obvious to you in a mystery adventure, like, oh, it's, a, it's super easy. I don't see why they're not connecting these dots is it's not clear to your players. So you almost need to inundate them with clues, like always have three clues. And, and one of them should be basically a gimme. You don't want to put something that's like critical information that you need to move forward um, behind something that the characters uh, ultimately could fail, in, in my opinion. Uh, when running an adventure, unless there's an opportunity to give them that information or get them to it in some other direction. It's, it's a good point. Cause it's also a really good, uh, you know, chance to look at every player, what are their strengths and skills and maybe having a seed of the truth that is based on each of those skills. Now they, you know, all, all of them are probably not going to use that appropriate skill, but yeah, if someone has like, arcana or they have medicine or they want to do an insight check um having everyone kind of figure out a piece of the puzzle is way more gratifying instead of just having the one person who's very good at figuring out things <laughs> you know that, that that can be a little bit alienating for the barbarian like maybe the barbarian yeah. knows how far an axe goes into someone's femur right yeah. like <laughs> you know, those like survival they... checks to see where mm-hmm. the muddy footprint went yeah yeah like there are things that that each subclass each class is going to know like the assassin will know what type of me like how long that poison was inside their system right yeah you know uh the type of the graze wounds on a bone and what that Mm. meant you know that kind of stuff can be really fun to figure out the truth especially if there's a bold-faced lie i think this is a really smart thing to talk about when it comes to mysteries because it touches on the the diversity of intelligence that people can have right in education they talk about five different types of intelligence and i'm not an educator i don't know them off the top of my head but D kind of compiles a lot of different types of intelligences like emotional intelligence hmm. and book smarts stuff like that into two stats uh, intelligence for book smarts and wisdom for kind of intuition and street smarts. And so a a lot of those kind of more nebulous, you know, post 1970s conceptions of what makes people intelligent um, aren't clearly represented in the D&D stat set. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's all simplifications have their pros and cons, Mm -hmm. Um, but it really does behoove a DM to think about every single class and, you know, background even Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what skills, what experiences a character might have uh, gained through their, you know, uh, work as a soldier and then a cleric or as a noble and then a barbarian. See, there's a huge twist there in that class, in that class background combo that has a bunch of different uh, intelligences tied up in it. And all of those things can contribute to finding clues in a mystery adventure. Do you feel like that's a good moment to use advantage, especially for like barbarian and the fighter and stuff that maybe don't have a skill that is as applicable? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, to, to give them a little bit of a boost because like, listen, you're a great wizard, but you know, how many heads have you chopped off with an ax? <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah, I think that's great. I, I, you know, I think if I were that wizard player, my DM said, you have disadvantage on this check because you don't really know what mm. ax wounds look like. Um, mm. I might mm-hmm. be a little frustrated at first. I'm like, ah, but I've got this plus eight to medicine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I, I think it's easier to incentivize with the carrot than the stick uh in this in this way give advantage to the barbarian maybe don't maybe don't penalize uh other people because they're off class but i don't know you know maybe your game is kind of harsh maybe maybe (sighs) that's the that's the tone that your players expect in that case go for it what's key to a good mystery for all of us because like i love mysteries i adore them i like tenant i like uh, i like most of uh that director's films i I like anything that is uh, the prestige alone was just uh just candy for me i, I can't love get anyone prestige. to watch it with me <laughs> but <laughs> i love it so much to watch that movie once the pandemic's over yeah okay love you're, the prestige come over we'll watch the prestige <laughs> please yes 
Uh, anyway, our social lives aside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I feel like that was one of the last great mysteries, actually. Uh, mm. So, yeah. What, yeah. what makes a great mystery for you? I, I really do like that magician trick of what I'm about to tell you is a lie. And then they still convince you. Mm. I adore that. I love it when you already know you're going to get lied to and somehow they make you forget that that this is going to be a mystery. Um, I always like that beginning. I love... Ah, okay. The last great mystery I watched was Knives Out, Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Oh, yeah, that was fun, yeah. And that movie rocked. I love that movie. Yeah, that was Um, really good. Because... uh, one of the one of the coolest things about it was that the mystery that actually never mind i'm not going to spoil knives out that movie came out only like two years ago so there are people who haven't watched knives out um but the 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 mystery isn't what you think it is between the time you bought your ticket and you see the first 10 minutes of of the film it's Mm -hmm. like oh i thought the mystery was x this is completely different um, and, you know, anything that plays with your expectations and suddenly sets you down on a frenetic, adrenaline-fueled uh, time crunch of a mystery is what really uh, speaks to me. Hmm. I think I think that's a good example of uh, presenting uh, you with you as as characters with more knowledge mm. yeah. than everyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't always see that in a mystery, but you you are presented with having way more facts than anybody else. So you feel like you're on the inside. Track. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. The main character in Knives Out knows way more than everyone else. It's like the and DMV it's not because they're a genius detective. It's because she's just got, she just knows these things. Mm. And yeah. that's a great threat too. Like that's a good key point for a mystery is to start off. And I, I like to do this with artifacts as <clears> well. <throat> I like to present someone with something they don't want. They don't want to know. They don't want to have. I've given people like Thor's hammer and then they have to run like hell. Uh, the ones after them, right? So presenting them with information they don't want to have and everyone else wants to have is great for a thriller slash mystery right away. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. How about for you, Justice? You know, it, it's it's interesting. I've run some mysteries. Oh, my dogs are about to bark. That's the real mystery. What are they barking? <laughs> at? Um, I think I, you know, for me, I like I like that 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 reveal at the end. But I think kind of like you mentioned about Sherlock, I really like the adventures or not the adventures, the stories where sometimes they are adventures where you, you, you can kind of solve it with, with everything going on that if you, if you pay attention that when the reveal comes, you're following along. And usually I think a good mystery uh, novel or story introduces something new that you didn't know, some sort of twist in it. And I and I I'm excited because I'm sure there's something in this book that's going to do that. The the red herring clues, the false evidence, the you get the wrong person because of the way things are presented to you. Um, I, I'm just I love that reveal at the end. I feel like it, I don't remember who said it. One of y'all said it, but it's the climax of the movie is when the sleuth kind of puts everything together and that's that's the moment of the movie for me that just i don't know it's what i've been waiting for the whole time <laughs> right and there's almost like a fourth act that is the confrontation mm. yeah right like like you, the, the, really the pinnacle happens way early and then you're like you get to see the bad guy it becomes almost a different movie mm. or a different yeah. story actually <laughs> because then the punish phase happens <laughs> i think one thing i'm interested to see because you had mentioned that they're one shots all the way up to what level 16 16 yeah is how this book will deal with some of those spells that DMs mm. point out about having trouble with. Like, like how how are you going to deal with Ray's dead and commune? Mm-hmm. And when the cleric prays and and casts or, or like does their inner whatever divination? Is divination. That right? I mean, yeah, hell, that's Your a divine full spell. As soon yeah. as you've got ninth level, you've got divination to just like ask the gods for help. Yeah. I mean, planar allies, maybe you have an angel come down and, yeah. and angels like they know when they hear a lie in some instances. So it, I'm, I'm curious about how wide these mysteries go and how removed they are to be mm-hmm. able to function with some of those mystery breaking spells. Yeah. And what, what does the level 15 mystery look like? I'm curious. It's a great question. Um, I, I think I'm hopeful, at least we'll get some really uh, mind blowing stuff 
if people like Chris Perkins and kind of the top dogs of Wizards, in addition to all these great freelancers are working on these things, there are people, you know, there are people with decades of D&D experience writing some of these uh, adventures. So hopefully uh, we really get to see it fly.